Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. No Poker Centers, no Pokemarts. In the last episode, we made it through, uh... Where did we make it through? I guess we made it through Meteor Falls. Made it all the way back up here to Mount Chimney. And we're now set to take on a couple interesting upcoming fights here. Now, uh, the thing to know about this, and many of you who've already played this game and are familiar with this area, is there's a really tough fight coming up here that could possibly cost me quite a few resources depending on how I want to play it. Now, um, you'll notice here that there's a bunch of Team Aqua and Team Magma guys. Here's Maxi and Team Aqua dudes, some more dudes over here. But none of these guys are really who we want to fight, or who we have to fight. Uh, they don't talk to them. You talk to them and nothing happens really. They're just like in the midst of a battle. Obviously these Poochianas are... This guy's getting like triple teamed here, I don't know feel like he's not going to do too well. Maybe he'll evolve and do something cool, but either way, we've got three Team Aqua members uh, coming up right in a row here, and this is the only way we can really progress to the game is we have to face all three of them. Um, the only thing is, we need to switch up our party here in order to help us deal with stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to teach Mudkip Rock Tomb. And I know it's not the greatest rock move, it's only 50 base power, it's only got 80 accuracy, so it's as bad as Stone Edge with half the power, so like, a lot of people are like, why on earth, uh, it's just it's so bad. But it lowers speed, and it's it's kind of okay, and we're going to be replacing Tackle with it. So that's what we're going to do. And we have Rock Tomb, alright. And the reason I'm putting that on there is purely for some flying type advantage with Mudkip, or Marsh Tomp. <laughs> Not even two minutes in, and I've already loved up a name, so whatever. Um, the other thing that I think I'm going to go for is I'm going to take off um, the Silk Scarf on Swellow, and I'm going to give him a Person Berry. Now, to many of you, uh, this may seem like a weird switch, but realistically, um, in the long term, it's going to help a Swellow survive the upcoming fight if I play things right. Uh, there is a lot of luck involved in this battle, uh, at least in one of the upcoming battles, and so from that perspective, um, it's it could be a little dicey. Uh, what I could also do here is I could give a person buried a Marsh Tomp as well. Um, I think I am going to do that as well because the first trainer here does in fact have a um, Zubat. And so to ease a little bit of the hacks chance to which I get supersonic and I miss a Rock Tomb, which is potentially the first turn move, um, I'm going to try and eliminate that hacks by giving us two chances to hit a Rock Tomb. So we just hit the first one, so don't even need the second. Um, Definitely a 1A KO. Zubat's relatively weak, especially in comparison to his further evolution Golbat, which we will be facing in an upcoming fight here. But uh, for now, Breloom is going to clean up shop for this fight, and we're on to the next one. So definitely appreciative of this scenario of events here. Uh, free to mock punch this thing. Definitely going to KO. He's weak to it, and I'm not too concerned about him. Alright, so we're through with one par portion of hacks here, but I'm definitely going to have to hit a couple more 80% chances, at least depending on how things go here. Um, I am going to throw the EXP share back onto uh, Mudkip though, because I do want to... Want, er, throwing it on Marshtomp, throwing it on Marshtomp. Uh, definitely putting the EXP share on Marshtomp. I totally said Marshtomp the first time. Uh, for those of you who misread or misheard, that's that's how it went down, so whatever. Um, either way, uh, this guy here is also not too much trouble. These first two fights are just kind of negligible. It's the third one I'm the most concerned about, mainly because it present, prevent, presents the greatest threat to our team. Um, it's definitely pretty. It definitely can be pretty dicey depending on how things play out. Especially where Hax is concerned, but uh, for this first poke here, it's a Carvana. It is Dark type, and I'm free to mock punch it, so that's what I'm going to do. I am going to take rough skin damage, which is one of the interesting aspects about Carvana and the rest of his family. Uh, I don't know exactly what the percentage is. It might be like six percent, like Lefties is. 
I know it's not based on the percent of damage that you do, otherwise I would have done way done way more to Breloom. But we only took three there. Um, I am going to mock Punch this guy, though. So that's going to deal with him. And let's see, what do we got here? I think his last is just a Carvana, okay. And the way I'm going to deal with him, I'm just going to... I'm just going to Mega Drain. I'll gain back to full. He'll die. And uh, Breloom will continue to roll. At this point, I'd say Breloom and Swellow are probably our hardest hitting members. Um, Marsh Tom's mostly there to take the hits and deal out super effective damage where necessary. But for the most part, it's going to be the Breloom and Swellow show. Until we get to, the, I guess, the upcoming gym that kind of defeats the whole theory right there. But... Uh, yeah, the whole party's kind of necessary. They each play their own little roles, but nevertheless, here is the most dangerous upcoming fight. Um, he does have three pokes, um, two of them being highly effective. Um, the first one is a Mighty Yenna, which does have Intimidate, which means if I go, if I start off with Breloom, I won't KO with Mach Punch, to which I just take additional damage, potentially eating a Sand Attack or something stupid. And to there, I just I just don't want to have to deal with that kind of crap. So we're going to lead off with Disco, absorb the dark type stab potentially aimed at him, uh, since he's not going to use a normal type attack against Sableye. He's most likely going to go for, he won't go to for sand attack against Sableye either, which either leaves him off using Howl or Bite, to which Breloom's kind of okay taking either of those. And then... From there, um, I believe he has a Golbat. He also has freaking Super Potions. It's a freaking annoying fight. And so, um, trying to plan around this crap is really annoying. And for the most part, I believe we have the party to take him down. Uh, I am gonna. I do have two options to go to for his Golbat, but um, as far as the battle goes, I'm just gonna let it play out. So, um, let's just jump right into things and hope for the best. Not always the best choice, but uh, I believe we have enough revives and super potions to where if things get really hectic and we have to resort to those things, um, we do have stuff to back things up. Uh, Sableye is there for potential fodder use, depending on how things played out, but for the most part, I think we should be okay. So, Disco leads off, and there goes the Intimidate. And uh, from here, we go to Breloom, and hopefully he bites. That's probably the best case scenario here. And he does bite. I believe we are still faster than this thing, so I'm going to try and Leech Seed, regain a little bit of health back. And we do hit that, which is nice. So that's going to give him a, us a little bit of HP. He does Sand Attack, which is eh, hopefully negligible. It's going to make these next few plays a little risky. But uh, for the most part, I believe Mach Punch should be able to deal with him without too much trouble. So, the first one goes down, and he gets to almost the point where we can take him out. But uh, not quite. So we're going to get a little bit of extra Leech Seed damage, and here's where his Super Potion comes into play. He's definitely going to heal at this point, so we're going to go for another Mach Punch. Hopefully hit it, and hopefully bring him down to where Leech Seed will take him out. And... Mock Punch luckily does hit through the Accuracy Drop, which is nice. And Leech Seed doesn't even need to hit him, so unfortunately we missed out on healing to full. But uh, Breloom dealt with Mighty Mana, Mighty Mana better than we could have hoped for. So now we're going to go to Swallow, and here's where it gets interesting. So I could potentially go to Marsh Taunt, just keep that in mind. Um, it requires me to hit a bunch of rock tombs though to which there's an 80% chance each one and I just don't want to rely on that if Taylor or if if Swallow does go down then we can switch into Swarm uh, Marsh Tomp and I think that's probably the best choice of best way to go about things but for now we're gonna wing attack it's our strongest move against this thing since we don't have our silk scarf anymore supersonic straight up misses so we don't even have to eat our person bear which means we can absorb a second confusion or effort I guess we can absorb a second hit from Supersonic. Now he's going to go straight up for damage. We can eat that. And I believe here he's going to Super Potion. So because of our Person Berry, I believe we can deal with this fight and take down this Golbat while taking minimal damage. 
So, there we go. One wing attack. Uh, if he does supersonic here, that's fine. If he wing attacks, that's fine. So, Swallow should be able to eat that, and it does. And to there, I believe a Soda Pop will heal us completely to full. So, Swallow perfectly did his job here. He dealt with Golbat, which was basically our biggest uh, roadblock in this fight. So, uh, it, the only thing we have super effective to hit it was Rock, Rock Tomb. And to many of you, you're probably thinking, why would you teach Rock Tomb and not use the super effective hit? And it's just because of the accuracy. Uh, playing around with that Golbat, even though it is still a Golbat, is just way too risky. And I just don't want to leave that up to a luck chance. Obviously, we dodged a Supersonic, which obviously is hacks, but um, at this point, I will take anything because this fight is definitely a lot more difficult than it looks. And it's to get away with only having to use a Soda Pop on uh, Swellow is probably close to a miracle and uh, the best thing I probably could have looked forward to in this fight. So. Very thankful for the way things turned out. Um, using minimal HP restore there is certainly going to go a long way in helping us protect uh, the integrity of this run and the wholeness of being able to actually finish what we started. So, um, as I said, we certainly had luck in our favor there with uh, dodging that supersonic, but for the most part, I think we did okay. So we're going to throw the silk scarf back on Taylor, back on Swellow. He no longer needs to be weary of confusion hacks. And I could just use a soda pop. I I, I, think, I think that's a fair use. It's 57. Uh, obviously not complete, uh, completely the most optimal use, but it's the best thing we've got going for it. Um, it's almost a complete use of the soda pop and letting Swellow die is just a waste of revive and extra healing item so I believe that saves more things than it gains so um, yeah I think we got away with a lot there so that was really sweet um, I believe what I want to do though is switch Breloom back to the front of the party just in case we enter some upcoming trainer fights uh, let's see nothing else here I don't think there's any other items you can pick up oh did I pick up the meteorite that's one of the important things Meteorite is fitting. Yes. Okay. So if you pick up the meteorite, you can actually pick, get um, something. I think you can get return, which is going to be really sweet. Uh, considering a lot of my pokes haven't died other than Zigzagoon, their happiness level should be relatively high. And at that point, uh, return is still a 102 base power move, um, even though it's not super effective against anything. It's still really decent. And there's a couple good items that we want to pick up on Jagged Pass here. So uh, the first is a full heal, which I almost hit there, but uh, hit a wild fight, so that's whatever. And uh, so far, Breloom's effect spore hasn't really come into play, but it is still a 30% chance, and so um, I am pretty fortunate of the fact that we do have that. Of course, I would appreciate poison heal, but the interesting thing about poison heal, it doesn't actually hit... Um, it only works in battle, so while you're poisoned outside of battle, you still take poison damage, and so... It's it's good and bad, but at the same time, I just don't know whether I, I would want to take poison damage. Um, we could fight this guy if we want. We could also fight the hiker. But I think I'm just going to dodge these two guys and work my way around this way. So we pick up a free burn heal there. And that might actually eat up uh, one of our la last... Uh, or one of our last few inventory slots, spots. I don't know. I think there's one more great ball around here though, uh, somewhere down here. Yes, okay. So there's our three items collected on this route. And uh, for those of you wondering why there wasn't an episode on Thursday, my foolish Canadian self uh, forgot that Thursday, or forgot that Monday was a holiday. And so my entire week was off. And so when it got to Friday, I thought Friday was Thursday. And at that point, I just, I wasn't able to record. And so I missed the Thursday episode, so here, uh, this today's episode is actually making up for the fact that I didn't upload on Thursday. But we're going to bypass all these three trainers. They're kind of negligible, ex negligible, negligible experience that we don't really need to uh, deal with. And that item over there is a nugget to which I don't really want to pick it up. 
And this guy, even though he's running back and forth, looks like a trainer. He's not a trainer, so, uh, psych. But, uh, we did finally make it to Lava Ridge Town and the fourth gym. And after a very long journey, I cannot wait to finally take on that, this gym. Uh, this pool over here presents an interesting um, place where we actually can pick up a why not egg. Uh, I don't really know what use why not would really have. I guess you could make use of counter and mirror coat, but predicting moves of AI pokes is just kind of... Eh. They're not going to switch, or sh so shadow tag is useless. And I think Encore is a... Uh, breeding move or an egg move to which we can't even get it even though Encore would be really sweet and we could use it for like setup crap and all that good stuff uh, you can also pick up a charcoal in this house here but we have no fire moves on our team and I don't even know if we plan on getting a fire type uh, move so I think that's where I'm gonna leave things off though and obviously this is gonna be a little shorter part but I want to put the entire gym in the next part uh, so probably not gonna fit that in without making this episode really long and yeah I just I think this is where we're gonna end things off so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this uh, definitely that fight we got away with a little bit there but uh, I think we're ready to take on the next gym and it's definitely been a long time since we fought one of these but once we fight this the game is definitely going to start to pick up pace because we're not far away from the fifth gym considering the way the fifth gym works is once you have four badges you can go fight it so um that definitely be interesting and i think we're ready to go take things on so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and i'll see you guys next time so peace